A huge shout out to all our fantastic ornamental bird community. Get ready, because today is an electrifying day. We're kicking off Chapter 4 of our avian genetics course and I promise you, this episode is a true game changer. Forget for a moment about the most vibrant feather colors or exotic eggs, because today we're going to unearth a genetic secret that is absolutely crucial for the life, well-being, and yes, also the economic success of your flock. We're going to reveal how genetics is the path to having chickens that are not only productive, but incredibly resistant to diseases. Here, we won't be talking about what medicine to give them when they're already sick. There are tons of great channels for natural remedies for that. No, we're going to the root of the matter, health from the DNA. It's the key to making your birds stronger than ever. So if you dream of raising super chickens with armored immunity against those common diseases that affect our beloved hens so much, especially laying hens which are so vulnerable, then I have a message for you. Grab a pen and paper and stay with us until the end. Because what you learn today will give you the genetic tools to reinforce the strength of your future generations of birds from birth. This is applied science to build a champion chicken coop. Let's get started. To jump straight into the root of this exciting topic, let's learn. What is genetic resistance in our chickens? Think of genetic resistance as an inner superpower that some chickens naturally possess. It's the ability their genes give them to defend themselves better against diseases, even before they attack. Imagine that every chicken is born with an invisible shield, a true genetic bulletproof vest. This shield, encoded in its genetics, helps them repel viruses, bacteria, or parasites. It's fundamental for their survival and for your flock to thrive, because a healthy chicken is a happy and productive chicken. And that's precisely what we're looking for with every lesson in this avian genetics course, health, beauty, and productivity. These genes that form this invisible shield are as crucial and important as the gene combinations for producing sex-linked chicks at birth, or even as important as the genes responsible for increasing egg production levels in our laying hens. When we look at a chicken, we notice its comb, the shine of its feathers, the color of its eggs. These are marvelous traits. But what about what we don't see? Resistance genes are like the foundations of a house. You don't see them at first glance, but without them, the entire structure could fall apart. They are as, or more, important than genes for color or high production. Because what good is a very prolific laying hen if she's always sick, if she can't defend herself against the most common threats roaming your coop? Now, a key point. Not all birds react the same way to a disease. Here we differentiate two vital concepts. Resistance. This is when the chicken, thanks to its genes, simply doesn't get infected or greatly minimizes the pathogen from entering and causing problems in its body. It's like the virus or bacteria bounces off its invisible shield, unable to get through. On the other hand, there's something called tolerance. Tolerance is when the chicken does get infected, but its genes allow it to manage the disease in a way that symptoms are very mild, or it recovers super quickly, and its production isn't significantly affected. It's like the shield doesn't stop at 100%, but the internal armor protects its vital organs, allowing it to continue with its normal life. Both are important, both resistance and tolerance. Both are different genetic strategies to defend against diseases. And that's precisely what I want you to learn in this chapter of the avian course. How to identify and introduce these genetic characteristics into the new generations of chicks you want to raise at home, so they are born with that defensive advantage. I remind you that this is chapter 4, and I'll leave the previous three chapters in the video description, so you can find them, watch them, and catch up on all the important information we've covered. Together, we're building the knowledge to have healthier, more beautiful, and productive birds. To understand how these genes I've mentioned work, we need to dive a little into how a chicken's internal army works. Its immune system. Think of it as two big branches that work together. Innate immunity. This is like the body's security guard, the first line of defense, always active and ready to react to any general threat. It acts quickly, it's non-specific, and our genes greatly influence how strong this initial defense is. It's the basic shield they come with as standard. Adaptive immunity. This is like an elite commando unit, a true military intelligence team. It takes a little longer to activate the first time it encounters an invader, but it's super specific, and most importantly, it learns and remembers. Once it knows a specific pathogen, it memorizes it for future attacks, acting with incredible precision. This is where genes play an even more sophisticated and strategic role. Within adaptive immunity, there's a fascinating and absolutely key part called the Major Histocompatibility Complex, or more easily known as MHC for short. Imagine that MHC is like the ID card or passport of each of the bird's cells, which identifies it as self. But not only that, it's also the identification system for invaders. It's the recognition station that, quote, presents bits of the virus or bacteria to the rest of the immune system, so it knows exactly what to look for, who to attack, and how to fight it effectively. It's practically the control center of the immune system. 
If the MHC doesn't read the invader's ID card or the type of virus attacking correctly, or doesn't present it properly, the immune response can be weak or slow, and the disease gains the upper hand. That's why it's so important for this reader to always be very efficient. The most interesting and a blessing of MHC is that it's incredibly variable. There are many different versions of this ID card or invader reader within chickens. It's like each bird has a unique combination of locks and keys. Why is this good? Because if a chicken has an MHC version that is very good at detecting and fighting virus A, but not so good with bacterium B, the key is diversity. We need other chickens in the population to have different MHC versions that are good with bacterium B. The greater the MHC diversity in a flock, the more types of shields and master keys they have to defend against a wider and changing range of threats. Beyond MHC, there are other specific genes that act as locks or switches at the cellular level that pathogens need to activate or unlock to infect a cell. The good news is that if these genes are modified in a certain way, the pathogens simply cannot enter. A clear example of this is the avian leukosis virus, ALV. We have identified genes in chickens that, if they have a certain mutation or genetic change, the virus cannot attach to the cell, and therefore the chicken is naturally resistant to that strain of ALV. It's like the virus tries to open a door with a key that doesn't fit, and it simply can't get through. Merrick's disease is a clear example, and a true success story of how genetics has been a hero in poultry farming. This viral disease, which causes tumors and paralysis, used to be devastating for poultry worldwide. Thousands upon thousands of birds died. It was a constant nightmare for producers and a tragedy for the chickens. But scientists discovered that some chicken lines were naturally more resistant to Merrick. By identifying the responsible genes, many linked to MHC, breeders were able to select and breed only the birds with those stronger genetic shields. Today, vaccination is a key tool, but the genetic basis of resistance has made modern birds much more capable of fighting Merrick, drastically reducing losses and suffering. And Merrick is not the only case. Genes have also been found that influence how a chicken responds to salmonellosis, fundamental for food safety and our health. Coccidiosis, a very common and frustrating intestinal parasite for any breeder, or even certain strains of avian flu. Genetics isn't a magic solution for everything, but it certainly tips the scales enormously in favor of your bird's health and resilience. So what are the tangible and direct benefits of having genetically resistant chickens in your coop? Well, there are many, and they will impact you directly. Less antibiotics. If your birds are naturally stronger, they need far fewer treatments and medications. This is good for the bird's health, for the consumer, less residues, for the environment. But most importantly, it protects your wallet by drastically reducing expenses on costly treatments and vaccines. Improved animal welfare. Healthy chickens are happy and active chickens. They move more, interact, explore, and most importantly, they don't suffer from diseases. Seeing your birds healthy and vibrant is the greatest reward. Lower mortality. This means fewer bird losses on the farm. This is vital for any breeder, hobbyist, or producer, as each bird is an investment of time, effort, and, above all, a lot of money. Something well known by those who raise large batches of broilers and laying hens. And of course, all of this translates into a direct and very positive economic impact for you as a serious producer or hobbyist. Fewer medication expenses, fewer bird replacements, and more consistent and efficient production. It's a virtuous cycle. A healthy flock is a productive flock. When your chickens aren't fighting diseases, all their energy is focused on growing, developing, and laying eggs consistently, which translates into more benefits and fewer headaches for you. Now, not everything is so simple on the path of genetic selection. Choosing birds for resistance has its challenges. First, resistance is often a polygenic trait. This means it doesn't depend on a single miracle gene, but on the complex interaction of many genes working together. It's like trying to build a perfect soccer team, where it's not enough to have just one star player. All the players have to be excellent and work together perfectly. Second, pathogens, those viruses and bacteria, are very clever. They are constantly evolving. If we select birds resistant to a specific strain of a virus, that virus can mutate over time and generate a new variant that our birds no longer recognize. It's a constant biological arms race between the chicken and the microbe, but genetics gives us an advantage. But not everything is challenging, on the contrary. The good news is that science is advancing by leaps and bounds and gives us increasingly powerful tools. Today, we use genomics tools, which is like having the ability to read the complete instruction manual of a chicken's DNA. We can use molecular markers, small flags, or specific signals in the DNA to identify which birds have the most desirable resistance genes, and best of all, without having to wait for them to get sick or expose them to risks. 
This greatly speeds up the selection process and allows us to breed stronger lines more efficiently, ethically, and with greater precision. Although this is the most advanced and costly method primarily used by large companies and commercial breeders, it's the tool professionals use, and now you know how it works. Then we have the more traditional and common method that many breeders use, and that you can apply at home to see amazing results. This is the most fundamental method. It consists of identifying your most resistant birds and using them as primary breeders. How do we identify them? Observe your breeders carefully at home or on the farm. Which hens or roosters get sick less often, recover faster, or seem immune when others fall ill? It's always necessary to keep detailed records of your bird's health, especially if there are outbreaks of very common diseases like respiratory problems. For example, if you have a hen that has survived an outbreak of, say, coryza without getting sick, or a rooster that consistently produces very healthy and vigorous chicks, they are your star candidates. Cross these individuals with each other or with other birds that also show high resistance. Now, to take it to the next level, hybrid vigor or heterosis. Imagine you have a line of chickens that are very good at resisting respiratory diseases, line A, and another line that is excellent at resisting intestinal parasites, line B. If you cross a rooster from line A with hens from line B, their hybrid chicks could not only inherit resistance to both, but the genetic clash would give them a general boost in their immune system due to hybrid vigor, making them globally more resilient. You will obtain offspring with a more robust immune system and greater general resilience against a wider range of common diseases. This is what many companies do with their commercial lines. But you, as a breeder at home, can also carefully experiment with this to boost the health of your chickens. My dear friends, the future of poultry farming is increasingly linked to genetic resistance. It's no longer just about treating diseases but about preventing them from the DNA up. By understanding and applying this knowledge, we are building a world where our chickens are not only productive and beautiful but also intrinsically healthy, happy, and resilient. The information you've just received is a powerful tool to transform your chicken coop into a true fortress of health. If this has seemed as fascinating to you as it has to me, and you want to master avian genetics to raise your own super chickens, this is just the beginning as many more chapters will come. Don't miss a single detail. If you're new here or want to review, be sure to watch the three previous chapters of our avian genetics course. I'll leave them all in the description of this video, along with other resources that will be very useful to you. And for our beautiful ornamental bird community to continue growing and taking this knowledge to every corner of the world, I only ask for four things, which are our greatest fuel. 1. Subscribe to the channel right now. If you haven't already, it's the first step to not missing anything. 2. Activate the notification bell. That way, you'll be the first to know when we upload a new video that could change the way you raise birds. 3. Leave us your comment. Tell us what you thought of this chapter, what questions you have, or what other genetics topics you'd like us to explore. Your opinion is golden to us. 4. And of course, share this information on all your social media, in your Facebook groups, with your breeder friends, on WhatsApp. Together, we'll help more people learn how to raise stronger and healthier chickens. To your success, fellow breeder, until next time. Let's keep building champion coops.